let's do the quotient rule here. First thing I'd actually probably do though before I do quotient rule is maybe let's try pulling a six fifths out. Makes life a little bit easier. And making the top x to the three halves. Can you see that? And the bottom is cosecant 9x. And you might want to put the 9x in parentheses to help you out. Okay. Remember, when you have a square root, the root part, the 2, is on the bottom, the root, the bottom of a tree. Roots at the bottom. So the 3 goes at top, the root goes at the bottom. OK, so we're going to kind of ignore the 6 fifths for a little while. Is that OK? We're going to have 6 fifths just chilling. Um, and uh, we're going to have to do something here. So we're going to do um, leave the 6 fifths out front. And we're doing a quotient rule. Let's just do the bottom real quick. What's the bottom of your quotient rule going to be? It's just cosecant 9x squared. Oops. Very bad. I almost made a big mistake without putting that parenthesis there. All right, the inside. Derive the first, x to the 3 over 2. It's going to be 3 over 2, x to the, subtract 1 from that, you get 1 half. Times, leave this one. Minus. Leave the first, x to the 3 over 2. And then we're going to derive this right here, the cosecant 9x. Now, the derivative of cosecant, what's the derivative of secant? Secant is secant tangent. Cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So this one's going to be negative cosecant don't forget 9x, leave the 9x. Cotangent, don't forget the 9x. Now, but what do you also have to multiply by? This is a chain rule. There's a 9x inside of it. So you, you derive the outside. You've got negative cosecant, cotangent. But you now need to derive the 9, so shouldn't there be a 9 also multiplied? Okay. Kind of really ran out of space here. So it looks like we now have the whole thing done. That right there was a chain rule. So leave the six fifths out front. The top, you get um, three over two x to the 1 half, cosecant 9x. And you have two negatives, right? So that becomes a plus. x to the 3 over 2. Oh, isn't there a 9? I'm going to squeeze a 9 in there. How do you know there's a 9? I put this 9 up front with this. And I have a uh, cosecant 9x cotangent 9x. Should have left more space. <laughs> OK. That's all over cosecant 9x. Put the squared in the middle now. Are there any GCFs I could yank out? Hopefully you see the GCFs you can yank out. So 6 fifths is going to have something to join it out front. 6 fifths is going to have a, a 3. 3 going to both those. 
six fifths, we'll leave that out front. It's going to have a three from here and here. It's going to have an x to the one half. It's going to have a secant nine x, a cosecant nine x. All that came out. Now I have this on the bottom. Uh, actually, let's put this right here. Put that on top. I have a three still. No, the three is out, but I have a one half. I have that's all I have. Okay, that's only a one half. And then right here you have a three left, and you have a cotangent. 9x, and you still got your cosecant squared 9x. Do you guys see something that cancels? Won't this cancel with that squared? So I now have something really nice and pretty. Just kidding. And that one half I'm going to leave just as a one half. That could be a very annoying one half, but I'm going to leave it there. Because um, that one half kind of has some issues. Let's leave it as, uh, let's see, the six times that, six times three is 18. X to the one half. Leave the five down here with a cosecant nine X. And in parentheses, it looks like we have a, I'm going to put 0.5 plus 3 cotangent 9x. We're going to leave it like that.